Pam Quinta. So, um, welcome to this little gallery that I've set up in my mom's office slash my storage area. Um, so I'm based in Quezon City, um, Metro Manila, and I studied studio arts painting in the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Um, although I don't really paint anymore. And then after graduation, um, I got into this mentorship program called AMP or R3 Mentorship Program with R3 Art Space. So in that program, I mentored under over 30 artists, um, curators, writers, and galleries over the span of three months. And I also apprenticed in ceramics under Cathy Santa Ana and Bob Acosta. So as for my practice itself, um, I guess you could say it's quite diaristic because um, I draw a lot of my creative fuel from personal experiences. So um, a lot of my works come from a very vulnerable place. And as for the subject matter or themes, um, they range from themes of gender or sexuality, um, but even um, more psychologically charged themes like um, depression or self-destructive habits. Um, but the common denominator of most of the works, I guess, is that they either deal with remnants or the processes yield remnants. Um, so there is this element of ephemerality in most of the works that I do. Um, so for example, I did this pile of 620 cigarette butts that I hand built. Um, and they were all free for the viewers to take home. To, they could take as, as much as they wanted. So um, this is some of the butts that I still have. So that's what remained as well as this photo of the original pile. It's interesting I bump into the even strangers or acquaintances that um, own some of those cigarette butts. Um, and then, um, as for the materials that I, um, work with, um, I, prim I primarily work with ceramics, but, um, I've also used resin and, um, photography and video. I've also tried my hand at performance um, last year. Um, the performance was called Boudoir. Um, it was for this event called Kabit at Sabit with um, Lord Nadita. Um, I also do a lot of installations. Um, so I guess that's it. But. Um, because of the pandemic, um, my production, my artistic production has significantly slowed down or halted um, because of the lack of resources or services that um, I need. Um, so a lot of the shows that I had slated for this year were moved to next year. And I've taken this time to reflect and ruminate um, about the ways in which I operate or we in the art scene operate. And a lot of the ideas that um, I've been um, playing around with or um, I've been trying to conceptualize um, the projects they sort of go beyond um, or try to go beyond the limitations of having to be installed in a, 
a single space, like um, a gallery. Um, so I'm I've started recently started this this curatorial project wherein I invited um, artists to make um, like parcel exhibitions, boxed exhibitions. So the works could be just shipped out to the viewers instead of all of the works consolidated in one space. The, the exhibit could exist in anywhere, pretty much anywhere. And the other ideas that I've been playing around with, um, or I've been trying to think about, um, how do we create or maintain connections during this time um, when physical interaction is restricted? So I've, I've been having these conversations with other artists. So um, I've been thinking about conversations themselves or um, the storytelling element of interaction. Um, so that's, those are some of the things that I've been exploring. So I guess during um, this pandemic, um, it kind of changed my way of thinking about creating or production. Um, creating doesn't necessarily have to yield a physical work or um, a byproduct or an art object that um, is to be installed in a gallery. It could it an exhibit or an artwork could be uh, the conversation itself. Um, so that's why I've um, I've also gotten into writing as well. So it's more, I guess, um, the work occurs mostly in the mind now. Um, a lot of, a lot of it is intangible. Um, and then I've also come to realize that um, the internet is something that we could explore in terms of exhibiting. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll go on to um, talking about um, the works for Figure Proof. Um, the works that I, I chose to include in Figure Proof, um, there are two sets. Um, the first two are the ones here behind me. Um, they're entitled of great value not to be wasted or treated carelessly. Um, if you look up in the dictionary, the definition of precious, that's um, what you'll get. Um, so the works... Oh, here. So I decided to include these sculptures for figure proof um, because they talk about intimacy and I feel like that's something we've all come to terribly miss during the pandemic. Um, so these are made out of um, my old lace bralettes that I've dipped in um, clear cast resin. And then I added these fresh water pearls. And aside from being a celebration of female sexuality, um, it also talks about the preciousness of intimacy. So, for example, even if we have just like a physical arrangement with someone and it's not a romantic relationship per se, I feel like um, intimacy should still be dealt with respect. And then as for these pearl details, they're a play on euphemisms, on um, the clitoris and um, bodily fluids. And so this is 
one of my favorite details actually it's this like frozen droplet of resin so the material has hardened actually the textile is hardened because of the the resin and then i'll move on to these set of works for figure so the title of this work is called um some evidence that i was here because it's actually just an image of an embroidery piece printed onto satin this isn't actually the finished um project because the final embroidery piece i dipped it in ceramic slip and then fired it um so there was just a resulting um fossil of the work this whole project i wanted to focus on the processes that i wanted to explore so aside from this image i also dip the embroidery piece onto thigh um stoneware and porcelain stained with black stain so there's the details of the thread this is actually supposed to be wall bound but i was scared to hang it up hang it up myself because i might end up breaking it so this whole project I wanted to focus on the processes rather than the um, resulting art object or byproduct. Um, it was the doing that really mattered rather than whatever was going to be exhibited. It was sort of like a consciousness born of be being fully present in the process of making the work. So these are just part and parcel reincarnations of the embroidery piece.